For what purpose does the gentleman from Virginia rise? Mr. Speaker, I move that the House suspend the rules and agree to H.R. 1147, the Local Community Radio Act of 2009, as amended. The clerk will report the title of the bill. H.R. 1147, a bill to implement the recommendations of the Federal Communications Commission report to the Congress regarding low-power FM service. Uh, I ask unanimous consent that all members Just will have five legislative the days. Will suspend. We would ask that conversations be removed from the floor. Pursuant to the rule, the gentleman from Virginia, Mr. Boucher, and the gentleman from Nebraska, Mr. Terry, will each control 20 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Virginia. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that all members will have five legislative days in which to revise and extend their remarks and ex insert extraneous material into the record. Without objection. Uh, and Mr. Speaker, I recognize for such time as he may consume the Chairman of the Energy and Commerce Committee, the gentleman from California, Mr. Waxman. We would ask that conversations be removed from the floor. So that we may proceed. The gentleman from California. Uh, I uh, rise in strong support of H.R. 1147, the Local Community Radio Act of 2009, and I want to thank Chairman Boucher for his leadership in guiding this bipartisan bill through the committee. I also want to recognize and thank Mr. Doyle and Mr. Terry, the original sponsors of the bill, for their efforts to expand diversity, localism, and competition in our media landscape. Mr. Doyle has been a tireless advocate of local community radio, and I greatly appreciate his leadership, flexibility, and persistence. I'm pleased that the House is taking up this important measure, as I have long supported expanding low-power FM radio services. The bill removes a statu statutory barrier to the creation of potentially thousands of new low-power stations across the country. The creation of these stations will further the overriding national policy goals of promoting broadcast localism and diversity. I'm pleased that the bill includes strong protections against unreasonable interference for incumbent radio broadcasters, as well as a clear dispute resolution process should such interference occur. I want to thank National Public Radio for working with the Energy and Commerce Committee in a constructive manner. I also want to commend the Prometheus Radio Project, the United Church of Christ, and other supporters of Low Power FM services for their valuable input. I urge my colleagues to support 11, H.R. 1147, and I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. Gentleman from Nebraska. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself as much time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. As co-author with Mr. Doyle, I too rise in support of H.R. 1147, and it was my pleasure to come to this floor to discuss legislation that is the product of great bipartisanship. Congressman Doyle and I teamed up in working on this low-power FM legislation, and the product that we have today here on the floor is a good one. We do believe this bill has the potential to revolutionize what Americans hear on their radios, and that it will provide an exciting new platform for citizens to communicate with one another within their own local communities and neighborhoods. Low Power FM radio offers people at the local community level the opportunity to broadcast when otherwise they may not afford to do so. This is extremely important for non-commercial groups like schools, churches, neighborhood organizations, the ability of those groups to broadcast their message contributes greatly to the overall betterment of our community and society as a whole. Many local and statewide organizations are interested in obtaining low power FM licenses, including the following two in my district, Omaha, Nebraska. Wes Hall, who is the CEO of the uh, Suntana Man Communications says this legislation is a dream come true. You quote, you cannot build a community without a cohesive voice 
and this will give a voice to the voiceless. He went on to say, quote, Low Power FM is the beacon that lights up the future for us, and bravo to Lee for championing, well, I don't have to read that part, but uh, Wessall has been involved in the uh, LP FM issue for years and believes this legislation is the light that allows the communities to come together. This is very exciting news, said 100 Black Men of Omaha President Tim Clark. Communities across the country will now have a real opportunity to increase the ability to effectively communicate issues, concerns, awarenesses, campaigns, and to provide sensitive programming. North and South Omaha will benefit positively from this challenge to develop unified efforts for the betterment of their constituents. I appreciate both Wes's and Tim's work on this issue, as well as other groups devoted to fulfilling the interests and needs of our community. I do believe this legislation is about empowering individuals who are making a difference in Nebraska. As a member who back in 2000 voted in favor of legislation to require a minimum of four intervals between radio stations, I'm proud to, today to be able to stand by my friend from Pennsylvania as well as all LPFM advocates in a bipartisan way in support of this legislation. The authorization of the uh, meter, uh, MITRE study really was important. And now we definitively know that there will be no interference caused by reducing the required separation between new LPFM broadcasts and existing full power broadcasts. I encourage all of my colleagues to support this important community-based legislation and looking forward to it being enacted into law. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I reserve the balance. The gentleman reserves. The gentleman from Virginia. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I yield to myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized. The bill before the House is the Local Community Radio Act of 2009. It was introduced by Representatives Doyle and Terry and will provide additional opportunities to create new low-power FM radio stations by allowing their operation on third adjacent channels to the full-power radio stations. <coughs> Low power stations, which are community based nonprofits that operate at 100 watts or less of power and have a broadcast reach typically of only a few miles, play a unique role in our media. They're far more likely than their full power counterparts to be owned by women or minorities. And they're an important forum for local clergy, for educational institutions, and for a wide array of community leaders to have a say on important local issues. I want to commend the cooperative work of our colleagues, Mr. Doyle and Mr. Terry, and radio broadcasters, significant stakeholders in this matter, as we have resolved the concerns of local public broadcasting stations that have a special need to protect the numerous translator stations that they operate from any local channel interference and amendments that we adopted in the subcommittee consideration of the bill achieve that protection. Among other provisions, the bill directs the Federal Communications Commission to allow the operation of low power FM stations on third channel adjacencies to the full power FM stations and FM translator and booster stations. Retains the FCC's existing minimum distance separation requirements for FM stations that provide radio reading services for the visually impaired. At the same time, the bill provides for remediation of interference complaints between low power FM stations and full power stations, as well as FM translator and booster stations. And the measure directs the FCC to conduct an economic study of the effect of low power FM stations on full service commercial stations and submit those findings to the Congress within one year. I want to thank Mr. Doyle for his tireless work on this measure. He has introduced this bill several times, and this is the first Congress in which it has been brought to the House floor. I tremendously appreciate his work and the work of Mr. Terry, his partner in this exercise, with the various stakeholders and with members of our subcommittee uh, 
their work collectively has resulted in our being able to present this bill to the House today. I also want to commend the bipartisan approach that we have taken in our subcommittee and full committee to processing this measure. And I commend Chairman Waxman and Ranking Members Barton and Stearns for the highly cooperative manner in which we have all together advanced this measure. Mr. Chairman, I reserve the balance of our time. Gentleman reserves. Gentleman from Nebraska. At this time, uh, Mr. Speaker, I'd like to yield two minutes to the gentlelady from Tennessee. The gentlelady from Tennessee is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I do thank the gentleman from Nebraska, and I am thrilled to stand today and support the Local Community Radio Act. This is an issue that I've been engaged in since my days in the Tennessee State Senate, and in an age of consolidating radio stations and a competitive marketplace for airtime, this legislation will allow smaller groups to be heard. Indeed, Chairman Boucher has mentioned this, as has Mr. Terry. And and it is an important reason for having this low power radio act, for having this available for our communities. Whether we're talking about the aspiring blues performer in Memphis or whether we're talking about an up and coming country star in Nashville, one of our colleges or our universities that are getting on the air and showcasing some of their local talent and some of their personalities, or maybe it is some of our religious organizations or churches, it is a way for them to spread their message. And so this legislation does give a crucial voice to these communities. I was pleased that Mr. Boucher mentioned uh, women, small businesses that are owned by women, and the number of women that we have seen move into the communications field because they had the ability to get to a low power station and develop a format in programming that will help them to launch a dream and actually innovate for our airwaves. We've heard from a wide range of groups. They do stand in support of this. It is a pleasure to stand and support the bill, and I urge this chamber to move forward on passing this legislation. I yield back. The gentlelady yields back. Gentleman from Virginia. Uh, Mr. Speaker, at this time, I yield such time as he may consume to the sponsor of the bill, the gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Doyle. The gentleman from Pennsylvania is recognized for such time as he may consume. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank Chairman Boucher and Chairman Waxman for strongly supporting my bill that will give local communities across this country access to their airwaves. I'm grateful for the support that this bill has from both sides of the aisle, including the bill's lead co-sponsor, my good friend Lee Terry from Omaha. When the Federal Communications Commission created the Low Power FM radio service, they sought to create opportunities for new voices on the airwaves and to allow local schools, churches, and other community-based organizations to provide programming that would be responsive to local community needs and interest. Congress, however, passed the Radio Broadcasting Preservation Act in 2000 and many of those organizations were prevented from communicating to their members, supporters, and residents on the FM radio dial. That bill called for a field study performed by the MITRE Corporation and for the FCC to recommend to Congress what we should do. In 2004, on a unanimous bipartisan basis, and for a second time in November 2007, and for a third time once again in September of 2009, all five FCC commissioners agreed that Congress should lift the restrictions on LPFM stations and allow the FCC to license new stations in more communities. The bill we debate today, the Local Community Radio Act of 2009, does just that. Where they're allowed to exist, under current law, LPFM stations have proven to be a vital source of information during local or national emergencies. And these stations promote the arts and education from relig religious organizations, community groups, organizations promoting literacy, and many other civically oriented organizations. Stations like KOCZ in Opelousas, Louisiana, which is operated by the Southern Development Foundation, a group active in African-American community. 
This station broadcasts public affairs shows, religious programming, hip-hop, and Zydeco, Zydeco music 24 hours a day. Zydeco music is central to the cultural heritage of the Acadiana region, but had recently disappeared from the radio that's been dominated by commercial radio. And, and WQRZ in Bay St. Louis, Missouri, which re remained on the air during Hurricane Katrina and served as the emergency operations center for Hancock County during the worst storm there in a century. But Congress has to act on the Commission's recommendations, otherwise similar stations are prevented from operating in communities across America. Communities like mine, which are too large to have any slots for new LPFM stations on 4th adjacent, but could fit several at 3rd adjacent. Stations like Lightning Community Radio and WMKP, The Roar, at Penn State's Greater Allegheny Campus wanted to serve the McKeesport area in my district. The current law relegates them to webcasting, but they want to simulcast on the air as well. We must pass this bill today to make sure that that can happen. Now, my bill has undergone some changes from the full committee, and the National Association of Broadcasters, as well as National Public Radio, have removed their objections and do not oppose the bill. This bill has broad support, and I will be adding into the record these letters from almost a dozen leaders from Catholic and Protestant faiths like the United Church of Christ and the National Association of Evangelicals, a letter from two dozen national and local public interest, civil rights, and local groups, another letter from the Leadership Conference on Civil Rights, and finally, a letter from the National Federation of Community Broadcasters and Prometheus Radio Project, all of whom strongly support the local com uh, Community Radio Act. Mr. Speaker, the time has come for Congress to rewrite the law. The time has come to make the airwaves available to the people they serve. The time has come to bring low power to the people. I ask my colleagues to support the local community radio act, and I yield back, uh, and I yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. Gentleman from Nebraska. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I uh, appreciate your efforts, Mr. Doyle. And uh, Mr. Doyle mentioned uh, the variety of religious organizations that support this, and I found the same thing in my community, and I want to yield two minutes to the gentleman from South Carolina who, in fact, wanted to speak on that aspect of our low-power community uh, radio. The gentleman from South Carolina is recognized for two minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today in support of H.R. 1147, the Local Community Radio Act of 2009. I appreciate the leadership of Congressman Lee Terry of Nebraska on this important issue. Passage of this bipartisan legislation is vital to expanding the availability of non-commercial low-power FM, LPFM radio stations to towns and cities across our country. This legislation repeals certain restrictions that limit broadcast capabilities for low-power FM stations. Expanding LPFM licenses will make owning a radio station possible for churches, synagogues, schools, emergency responders, and other community groups that best understand the needs of their local communities. These stations give civic, clergy, and community leaders a forum to discuss local issues and provide essential emergency services during times of crisis. Hundreds of churches and ministries already rely on LPFM stations to get their message out. But unfortunately, service is currently limited only to rural areas and frequently limited to property lines. I urge members to pass H.R. 1147, which will move to expand low-power FM radio for churches, synagogues, schools, community groups, and emergency responders in the United States. I yield the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. Gentleman from Virginia. Gentleman from Nebraska. Mr. Speaker, I have no further uh, uh, speakers, so at this time I would like to yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman from Nebraska yields back. Gentleman from Virginia. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we also have no further requests for speakers, and at this time I yield back the balance of our time. Gentleman yields back. All time has expired. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass H.R. 1147 as amended? Those in favor signify by saying aye. aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion I of the object, chair. I object to the vote on the grounds that a quorum is not present and make a point of order that a quorum is not present. 
Pursuant to Clause 8 of Rule 20 and the Chair's prior announcement, further proceedings on this motion will be postponed.